What's up, everybody? It has been a hot minute since I've done a stream, and I figured I'd do this just to get this information out there. Um, as promised, I believe I've found the fix for the Ender 5 Max and the bed temperature not being sustained when you set a temp higher than 90 degrees Celsius. So if you're not aware, the Ender 5 Max is a printer that can be enclosed and is advertised as a printer that can go up to 100C on the bed, and it does hit that. So what I've been doing is going through the files, analyzing what it's doing on the back end, and Creality actually has services running on the background that are basically sitting there monitoring the printer when it's printing. And what one of these services do, or actually two of them, we're going to be patching two of them, is it will basically start a timer, and if it sees the bed is at a temperature above 90C for more than about an hour and a half seems to be the point where it kicks in, it will drop it down to 90. Now, if you guys have ever print ABS, especially on a larger part, you will know you need that bed temperature at 100 degrees to have reliable printing with ABS. So, I've published all the information free of charge on our website. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and show you guys, and I'm going to work right off the... Uh, article that I just posted earlier today. So we're going to go through and root my printer and then we're going to go ahead and install my patch. So preemptively I have the root applied and I did take pictures and put it on the guide. So I'm going to switch over to my screen share here. And if you go to the uh, news section here at the top, there's an article here called the Ender 5 Max Bed Temperature Patch. So in this article, I have step-by-step -step directions on what you need to do, what the issue is, and this has been confirmed by Creality that this is something they did um, because they were worried about the components in the printer. Don't know what that means. We've been running it for many, many weeks now with 100 C temps. Nothing has had any issues. The wires are all good in terms of temperature. Everything looks fine. So, but again, disclaimer, I'm putting this out for free. There's no warranty, there's no guarantee that this is not going to screw your printer up. Um, I have it on my printer, we're going to do it right now. And then if you guys do want us to do that, we do have the capabilities to set up a call where we remote into your computer. And then as long as your printer is on the network and you can go to the screen and do the root process, we can install this patch for you. So this first step is you need to turn root on on your printer. So on the LCD, you go to settings, root account information, and you accept the EULA here. So if you look at the EULA, I'm going to move my head over here because I didn't realize it was in the way. Um, it makes you wait. So it'll make you wait 30 seconds. You basically go to the settings gear, you go to root account information, you get this screen, you check this box, and then when it turns green, you hit okay. After that, it'll say the root account information, and then you can go ahead and confirm that you have root by clicking the little back arrow, and then you'll see root here. So right there, where I'm like pointing on my screen like you guys can see it. Um, so the next thing we do is need to go to SSH. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with that, SSH is basically a remote terminal. This printer runs Linux, so we're going to use SSH to connect into it. Um, to figure out what IP address your printer's on, on, using this as a reference, if you go to the network tab, it'll show your Wi-Fi name, and it will show you the IP address. So you need that IP address. I know mine is on 10.0.100.151, so I have that in here. I'm going to put this into putty here and then hit open. Now, if you get a message saying that, are you sure you want to connect because of a cert or something, just hit accept. So I'm going to type root, hit enter, type creality underscore 2024. Now, if you notice, it didn't show anything while I was typing, and that's normal for SSH. If you're first time using SSH in any capacity, it will not show the password. So now we're greeted with the root prompt. This is what we should see. So I made this as easy as possible. You can go here, and I'm going to just kind of split screen this here. Oop. Not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'm going to split screen this here, and I'm just going to copy all four of these lines, and I'm going to just right click, and it'll paste them in. And then on the last one, I hit enter. So this is what we should be left with. So what this just did is this pulled down two scripts from our server, and it put them on your printer and then it made them executable. So the next thing we need to do to patch the servers is we go right click copy and paste. And there we go, it's patched.
it is that simple. So this is a script I wrote. We make a backup file of the original files. So the files we're patching are user slash user slash bin app dash server, user slash bin slash master server. And so if you need to revert this, um, there's also a script that it downloaded um, where you can just do uh, period slash e5 max dash restore dot sh and it will copy the files back over um, and then it tells you here reboot the machine now if it isn't clear enough i made it say it multiple times um, and you can ignore this it's just killing the services so i have the the script really aggressively kill the services because what i found is that creality will restart those services so we want to just nuke those services so they aren't running so we can patch the file um, now the other thing i had to figure out in here is making sure we don't repatch files that are already patched and then getting rid of the original. So if we run it again, you'll see backup skipped, it already exists. So it's the script is smart enough to tell you to not copy the already patched file over your backup. And it'll also tell you here, error, app server not patched or already patched. Or app server not patched or it's already patched. So that's what it is. This is very, I've, I've probably spent just on the script about four hours. I had to reset the machine. Like I went through, tested it, factory reset the machine, redid it. And now we're at a point where this is it. So all I have to do at this point is type reboot. And now the printer's patched. So now those services that are going through, going that are going there in the background, just kind of lurking, screwing with your temperatures, they're patched. So they just can't do it. Um, you can look at the scripts too, if you want, if you just go to the URL um, for these scripts, like here's the restore script. You can see this. It's per, th that one's really simple. Um, and then this one is a little more complex and it's going to look weird in here, but this is the script. So you can look and see what they're doing. So anyways, I've just patched the printer and that's it. So if we notice here, I got a, uh, software abort that's good that means the printer rebooted so that's all you need to do um hopefully you guys appreciate the time i spent on this i seriously put into this over 25 hours so if you guys do want to support my work here on that page um where the directions are at the bottom um i've got a note here you know if you guys want to buy stuff we sell things um and that goes towards paying for my time to do stuff like this and if you don't want to buy anything you want to just donate you can click here and it'll take you to a paypal donation page so with that i hope this was short and sweet and got the point across of how to do this and again um if you guys have any questions or issues go ahead and leave a